This is a line following robot and in this video I'll be explaining you how to make the connections using Prisync, the logic behind the code and tell you how the IR sensors and the motor driver function. Prisync is an open source software program created at the University of Applied Sciences Potsdam, Germany to help designers translate their prototypes into real products. There are different views in Prisync like the breadboard view, schematic view, PCB and a place to write your code. And it has a vast library of parts in the parts palette and you can drag and drop the required parts onto your project. You can even change the properties of these parts by going into the inspector window and for example I can change the number of bands on the resistor, its tolerance value and the resistance etc. I can even add an Arduino board onto the project. And these rails on the breadboard are called the power rails and I can connect the ground and the input to these. These columns of five are connected and the components can be connected by drawing wires onto the breadboard. Now for our line following project, we need an Arduino Uno, two DC motors, a motor driver, two IR sensors, a 9 volt battery and a voltage regulator. Here I have arranged all the parts and I'm now connecting the ground pin of the Arduino to one of the holes of the power rail. I can change the properties of the wires in the inspector window. The 5 volt input to the other rail. The VCC or the supply voltage pin should be connected to the 5 volt input, the ground pin to ground and the output voltage is connected to pin number 2 of the Arduino. Here we have connected the output pin of the left sensor to pin number 2 of the Arduino and the right sensor to pin number 3 of the Arduino. Now this is how the schematic view looks like. This over here L293D is our motor driver and it contains 16 pins. 8 on one side and 8 on the other. Each side of the motor driver circuit is dedicated to the controlling of a motor. There are two input pins, one enable pin and two output pins for each motor. L293D consists of two hedge bridge or four half hedge bridges which can be used to control four solenoids or two motor bidirectionally or a stepper motor. Pin 1 is enable 1 and it enables one particular channel of the motor driver. Unless and until enable pins are pulled high, logic high, the section of IC controlled or activated by the enable pin will not work. That is the side of the IC on which the enable pin is located will not respond and the motor connected to that side will not rotate. So pin 1 and uh, pin 9 that is enable pin 1 and enable pin 2 are to be given an input of 5 volts. So both the enable pins are given an input of 5 volts. Pin 8 is VCC2. It is the voltage which will be supplied to the motor. And pin number 16 is input voltage VCC1. This is the power source to the IC. So this pin should be supplied with 5 volts. There are four ground pins in the motor driver IC as it deals with heavy currents. Due to so much current flow, the IC gets heated. So we need a heat sink to reduce the heating. The soldered pins on the PCB provide a huge metallic area between the grounds where the heat can be released. When input pins are high, current will flow through the respective output pins. Therefore, input 1, 2, 3 and 4 are connected to digital pins 4, 5, 6 and 7 of Arduino. Now the output pins are to be connected to the terminals of the DC motors. Pins 8 and 16 are to be connected to the power rail. And the ground pin of the voltage regulator should be grounded. The in pin of the voltage regulator should be connected to the battery. The battery should be then grounded. 
the output pin of the voltage regulator should be given to the power rail. So this is the final breadboard view of the line follower. Here's the schematic view. And the PCB view. I will now make the connections on the breadboard. Final connections are done here. And it works. I will now explain how the IR sensor module works. The sensor section of the line follower contains two IR modules. And each IR module has an IR transmitter and a photodiode. The transmitter transmits infrared light and when it hits a white surface like this, it is reflected back and is absorbed by the photodiode and therefore the LED glows. But when IR uh, light hits a black surface, the light is absorbed by the black surface and nothing is detected by the photodiode and therefore it sends a logic low. It also contains a potentiometer and an LM358 comparator. Here I've got two different kinds of potentiometers. One 10k potentiometer, a 5k potentiometer also called a trim pot. They're just variable resistors fitted with three terminals and a rotary control shaft or a spindle, which can be used to vary the resistance. You can vary the resistance of the potentiometer using a screwdriver. These potentiometers are used to give a reference voltage to one terminal of the comparator. As said before, the potentiometer is connected to one terminal of the comparator. It sets the reference voltage. The IR sensors provide a change in voltage at the second terminal of the comparator. And the comparator is a circuit built from op-amps. An op-amp or an operational amplifier is a differential gain amplifier and it produces an output voltage which is the amplified version of the difference between the input voltages provided to it. Here we have a voltage comparator which is operating in the open loop configuration. It comes under non-linear application of op-amps. That is the difference between the input voltages is greater than 100 millivolts. Here the input voltage is being given to the non-inverting terminal and therefore the output voltage will go to positive saturation voltage if the input voltage is greater than reference voltage and the output voltage will be equal to minus Vsat if input voltage is less than reference voltage. And if the input voltage is given to inverting terminal and reference to the non-inverting, then the output voltage will be equal to plus Vsat if input voltage is less than V reference and uh, Vout will be equal to minus Vsat if Vn is greater than V reference. The Arduino Uno is used to control the entire process and the driver section consists of the L293D motor driver and two DC motors. The motor driver is used because the Arduino cannot supply a high enough voltage and current to drive these DC motors and therefore this motor driver will turn it into a higher current signal to drive these DC motors. The code is written in the Arduino ID and can be verified and it can be uploaded to the Arduino board. In the program we have first defined the input pins for the sensors and the output pins for the motors. In the void loop we have given four conditions. So moving forward, turning left, turning right, and to stop. If both left sensor and the right sensor sends logic 1, then both the left motor and the right motor will have to be given a high logic to make it move forward. If the left sensor comes onto the black line, then it will get a logic low, and therefore you'll have to make it turn uh, left so that it remains on the line. Therefore, you'll have to activate the right motor and give, by giving it a logic high and the left motor should be given a logic low. If both sensors are getting a logic low, then the line follower will have to stop and therefore the left motor and the right motor will have to be given a logic low. So, let us now test the line following robot. <laughs> 